more of a philosophical question um, to something that you had alluded to earlier. You know, you mentioned the necessity for diversion programs, and I think that's definitely the case, especially when you're dealing with individuals who might be addicted to drugs. Um, you know, fentanyl's been a problem, meth has been, an, uh, it has been a problem, and it's continuing to be a problem. Uh, and you know, there's this idea that hey, instead of prosecuting them, instead of making them criminals as a result of their uh, addiction, let's offer them treatment. But we're now dealing in the, dealing with this weird situation where there's really nothing compelling them to get treatment, right? There's nothing to force them into treatment. Uh, they're not being prosecuted if they're uh, doing drugs out in the open. And I think, listen, I get that progressives want to deny that open drug use <laughs> out in the public is not a thing. It is a thing, we all see it. It happens in front of a CVS as I'm walking in, people literally injecting uh, heroin or whatever it is into their veins. It's unacceptable. and. Cops aren't gonna come arrest them. I don't want cops to arrest them. But there's really nothing to compel them to get treatment. You can't, so what do you propose be done in a situation like that? And I'm so glad you asked that, because you're absolutely right. It's a humanitarian crisis. It's a public health disaster of epic proportions. We see it every day. It's devastating communities. It's devastating families. And we need to do something about it. And the number one thing we have to do, and I've been saying this, since day one of my campaign in 2019 and every day I've been in office. We must have more treatment beds for those who want them. You know, your question is how well, can we people- But what about those who they don't they want them? That's the problem, those who don't no, want them. No, well, here's the threshold issue is that, you know, you say, well, how can we compel people to get treatment? I can tell you stories for days of young women who are addicted and who are trying to get help and who show up every day outside a drug treatment center at 8 a.m. and ask for a bed and there's no beds for them. It is easier in San Francisco to get high than it is to get help. And until we change that, until we make it easier for people who want help when they want help to get it, we will never be able to force our way into a solution. I have judges who call me all the time and say, district attorney, there are no treatment beds available. I've got someone sitting in the jail. They are drug addicted, they are eligible for treatment. I want them to go into treatment and there's no treatment beds for them. If we can't solve that problem, it doesn't matter if you wanna compel people to go into treatment or if you wanna ask them to do it voluntarily. We must have treatment beds, we must have a public health response. When and if we do, then all these other tools become available. Compelled treatment becomes available. Conservatorship becomes an option. Mm -hmm. The kinds of things that we know we need to do, we're simply not doing because of a lack of investment in infrastructure. And let's be clear, Anna, the criminal justice system, the system that has become known as mass incarceration in this country took decades and hundreds of billions of dollars of investment to build. We must take seriously the reality that we have to also invest in mental health care, in drug treatment, in housing. If we are serious about public safety, and it is my number one priority, then we must recognize that in a place like San Francisco, 75% of the people police take to our county jail are drug addicted, mentally ill, or both, and they are not getting the treatment they need in our jails. Yeah, I mean, our, our prison system is definitely not um, rehabilitating people, that's for sure.